For 18 and 21 plus audiences only. This channel does not condone illegal activity or illegal drug use. Content is for educational and comedic purposes only. What's up? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is the transition that the artist put. Once you get in here, it's... The it's gold gold you don't realize how big it is. What's up, bro? What's up, man? Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, bro. <laughs> Kenna Fam, Travs Dabs, Full Mount Morgan, Kenna Quest, and you obviously can tell we've got a special guest at the table. I got a joint in my hand. How did I get to this joint? Vince Painter handed it Jesus. to me. Kenna Fam, check it out. NFL veteran Vince Painter in the house today. My guy, how are you feeling? I'm good, brother. I'm good. How are you guys doing? I'm good. It's uh, an honor to have you down here in the studio, even though you almost bonked your head. <laughs> <laughs> Concussion on the way in. This man in. cannot stand up in our studio. <laughs> Kenna Fam, that's why we need you to click those links down below. We need to upgrade the studio, so make sure you hit that Patreon. We almost link put him in on IR before starting like, the right podcast. The the show. Like, I had <laughs> flashbacks, bro. <laughs> but that's how we're, it's kind of like that's how we get it's like a truth serum we bonk your head and then we can ask you anything you know? oh, yeah, and you'll be okay yeah. with telling us everything <laughs> get all the answers but concussion protocol <laughs> raining in from Norfolk Virginia yes, sir we appreciate you being up here did you uh, you boogied all the way up from Norfolk no yeah <laughs> <laughs> I've been up since five a.m. Yeah. So hey, tell, tell, tell tell us tell us a little bit about give us the basics the the, the quick synopsis of the early early life of, of Vince Painter before before the NFL. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So yeah, man, like you said, uh, grew up in Norfolk, Virginia, down in the Hampton Roads area. Man, uh, lived with my mom, my younger brother, um, dad was across town. Um, spent most of my weekends over there with him. Um, graduated from Maury High School. Um, I was probably one of the top. 100 top 50 recruits in the state uh coming out had offers from uh damn near everybody man um so that made that part of the journey a lot of fun took a couple visits um i took my visit to tech miami um florida and uh i believe those are only three yeah decided on virginia tech um because back then that was when during the beamer area beamer era uh heavy into the bowl games averaging 10 wins a season and whatnot we had a lot of guys from uh, my area that was on the team and that made it feel real homey um but uh yeah man um pretty 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 light going up i mean i don't want to sound like a like a Broken records of saying, you know, growing up in Norfolk was a typical story of growing up in, you know, one of those areas like that. You know how it goes down. Um, a lot of my friends and family went to, you know, various ways and whatnot. But um, I don't know, man. I kind of just wanted something different for myself. And um, just seeing what was going on in the city just kind of motivated me to uh, try my hand and um, aim high. I've always been an ambitious person. Um, so, you know, I just kind of wanted to be the one to show my family a different way um, of life. I told them that we were capable of doing something else. So that's kind of what motivated me throughout my younger years. My mom used to always hate on all my papers. I write, what do you want to be when you grow up? I always put professional athlete, and she hated it. But, <laughs> <laughs> so, she was like, pick something more realistic, like fireman, policeman, whatever. I was like, nah, like, this is realistic to me. I'm I'm going here. So it was a goal early for you? Very early, very early, like elementary school, man. Um, I always had my eyes on the prize. Um, I always grew up watching NFL, the NBA. I loved basketball at first. Was the then, path through the line though? Was it always destined to be on the on offensive the line? line? Yeah. No, no, it was not. Um, <laughs> so I, see, I'm a former like I'm a lineman, so I, I got a soft spot in my heart for the big man. You know, what I mean, I was I was 260 at a point. Like uh, yeah. I, I, I remember being big and and loving just being the big bully. And linemen are sneakily like, off, uh, like athletic. Like yeah, crazy. And I, and I call that's BS. Your list is six four. That is just not true. I don't know where that's from. There's no way you're six four. Right? I'm like floating between six four and six five. It's always a the debate. They try to hit me like six four and three quarters. No I was like, dog, just give me the five. Like, they just try come to hold it. They try to give you the Jordan special. Yeah, yeah, facts, Jesus. facts. But no, man, it wasn't. It wasn't always offensive of line. Um, even when I tried out for Pop Warner. I only did that for like two days because I had to play with the older kids. And mom was like, no, nah, I'll just stick with basketball. They had me on D-line then. Um, but I always kind of wanted to play basketball. I wanted to hoop. Um, so being offensive lineman wasn't what was in the forefront of my thought process. Um, I always thought I was going to be like a power forward or a center or something. And then even when my older brother did talk to me into playing football, we were talking like DN, maybe linebacker or something. Because coming out of middle school, I was 6'3", 260. So, what um, the <laughs> yeah, coming out of eighth grade, I was, so, I was six, three, six, so you got into football because you were big and yeah, just get- basically, basically, that was like he was like, nah, man, you're getting wider, not taller. So he said it's probably gonna be. And I got to school, and my coach, I told him I want to play D line. He said, well, you know, it's a lot of D linemen that's built like you. He said you got a better shot probably if you go O line because okay. um, 
He just kind of saw it coming down the, down the road. Oh. He had that foresight, man. I was a little mad with him at first. I wanted to play deep line bad. I wanted the stats. You know, everybody yeah. wanted to shine in some way. That wide nine. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Dirt, you know, you know, three technique, outside. getting after mm-hmm. it a little bit. But um, now the cards, mm-hmm. cards fell in my favor for offensive line, man. That's still nice. doing the dirty work in the trenches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that hand, that hand combat. I yeah. see. That's where that's where games are won and lost. Can't affect me. Facts. You know, skill position. Don't let the skill position players lie. No, to you, no. The fo- <laughs> these speedsters, these guys that can run, they, they don't know what they're Football's talking about. Football players can the do anything <laughs> except, blo- except block. Except block. <laughs> <laughs> except block. <laughs> Look, I can't block shit. Bro. Yeah, uh, yeah. You Catch see, yeah. You see Aaron Donald line up a uh, wide nine outside. What are you? How fast can is your kick slide? How quick can you get back there to protect your QB, man? I'm gonna rip my pants. Not fast, yeah, not fast. <laughs> No, not fast enough. It's different. No, but when you when you going up against six four three sixty, man, that's, that's a different world. And, I, right? and I, I, oh sorry, go ahead. I played flag football, right? Mm-hmm. And this one league I was playing with in DC, uh, one of the DNs for the Lions, like on his spare time, literally <laughs> plays on that team because I guess his cousin or brother, or whatever, <laughs> whatever. Wow. And it he be illegal. literally, well, illegal. <laughs> we, we were running, uh, so we were doing a, a triple option, right? Yeah. And I'm I'm the running back, so he pitches me the ball, and all I hear is, <laughs> and I'm very very fast, like very, I'm faster than most NFL players. Yeah. This dude was on my ass. Oh, you like, play it. No, no, I've never heard someone his size like Jesus that close to the back of my neck when yeah. I'm running. Yeah, bro. Like, yeah, bro. It's it's freak athletes out there. I, I, I put your your combine sense. How how big were you at the combine? The combine I was six five three twelve. And you ran a four eight forty yard dash. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. That's yeah. Fast yeah. <laughs> yeah, the thirty two reps on the bench I get. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I mean that's still Can fucking you still insane. Do that? Maybe. 32 of 225 is nutty, bro. It's crazy. I don't think I can do one. The only reason I say maybe, could, maybe really is because you were in a different you were in a different vibe on that day. Oh, man. yeah. Like, like, that's one of those things where your adrenaline's pumping. You just locked in. You got that tunnel vision that Pete Carroll's always talking about, man. You just just going. You like, saw him get 4-2-1, 40-yard dash. What was his name? Did you see that? This oh, yeah. Uh, Worthy. Was it Xavier Worthy? Crazy. Blazing bro. speed, bro. Yeah, and now they're trying to bring up. They always want to bring up the like the past grades whenever someone does something. Yeah. They're like, you know, Somebody, Bo Jackson I, ran a four two zero. You have to when it was right, but like four twenty. That, that's, that's that's that is they, unrealistically fast, bro. For his it's size, yeah. for his being the how big what, Bo Jackson was. That's what I'm saying. I'm I'm less impressed with that, and it's when the big men get sub five. Bro, mm-hmm. people bro. don't respect like Vince Wilfork ran like a five flat. He was I've like four hundred pounds, man. Like it's, that year, that year, the combine, bro. We had they had some really freakish offensive linemen outside of myself up there, man. That's when we had uh, Fisher was there. That's when Teron Armstead came out. That's when um, what you call it, uh, Lane Johnson was yeah, there. Famous, bro. Yeah. They, and they were fast. I thought I was running a fast boy. I saw those guys running. I was like, oh, oh all right. <laughs> <They're actually> moving, <laughs> this moving. is the competition today. Did you run track in high school? Uh, in high school, I did the big boy race, and then other than that, I did nice. shot put. Gosh, yeah, we did oh, a big the, boy the relay. Field. Big men usually run in the field yep. events, yep. less the track yep. events. Yeah, we had a relay, <laughs> not the full thing. But in college, they made us run 400s in the summertime. Absolutely. Yeah, those two yeah. days, man. <sighs> Bruh, it got real in the summer. I mean, but they get you in shape, though. Yeah, absolutely. I can imagine. You see Cat Williams run the 40? That was the funniest thing I've seen. <laughs> he, he was moving. Though. He was moving for to be his age and his size. He was moving. And he got though, like a four or five. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, what? Shocking. What? What were you more excited for? Like, what were you more hyped for? Combine day or draft day? Whew. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Um, probably, I'd probably say combine. Draft day was a little more like nerve wracking because you yeah. don't know what's gonna happen. Sure. Combine, you still have like you don't know what's gonna happen, but you have a little bit of control because like all right, outside of the other little like testing and stuff, and the questions they may ask you, you still have control as far as being able to go out there and perform in mm-hmm. front of the coaches and scouts and whatnot. So I mean, but draft day is out of your control. You just sitting there and just waiting. Wait, um, cool. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So first day I didn't do much. Second day my agent said that I could potentially go third round at the earliest. Mm-hmm. So I did have some family over just in case. Um, had like a little cookout whatnot at my dad's house. Didn't go. Um, so then the next day, the third day, I didn't invite anybody back over. Just had like my close, close family. Um, yeah. A couple of my friends. Um, um, my brothers. But um, that was more just a waiting game, and I'd probably say, yeah, excitement was definitely probably more so on the uh, combine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool, man. Very good. Yeah. I tell people all the time, I uh, when I forgot that I was sitting in my dad's house when I got that email for that invite, man. Yeah. And because uh, 
throughout my college career, I was recruited heavily, but I didn't play that much. I didn't play really until my last two years, my red shirt junior year. I dropped it down. Right, cool. the cherry fell out. Around, cherry. Oh, yeah, um, <laughs> I didn't play until my red shirt junior year, heavily recruited. Um, thought I was going to be a starter and whatnot coming in. Um, but then I started, I did special teams my red shirt junior year, and then I finally started the full season my red shirt senior year. And um, so after I finished, you know, I was kind of a question mark on the radar as far as, you know, going to the combine and draft or whatnot. So when I got that invite sent to my dad's house, man, I sat on the steps and fucking cried, bro. Like, <laughs> like nice. that, that, that was like a, like a, like everything coming full circle after putting in all the work in college and whatnot. Um, so yeah, that, that just whole roller coaster of emotions from that point all the way up to the actual day was just an amazing experience, man. But the vet put it to me the best, though. He said it was the best experience you never want to do again, and that is very true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a different type of nervous, right? Yeah, it's, it's a different it's like, type of nervous, and then, like, the week. Like, people only see the performance on TV, but three or four days, five days before that, we actually come into Indy, and you do, like, rounds of medical testing, two or three days of medical testing, plus um, interviews with coaches. They got the piss test at, like, 4 o'clock in the morning. On the second day, yeah, it's kind of ridiculous, dog. Um, interviews with coaches up until 10, 11 o'clock at night. And then um, they have the um, little, like, what is it called? The um, the little test or whatnot. Um, I forget what it's called. The little mental academic test. They have, like, two of those. And um, majority medical testing. But it's just a long week leading up to the actual performance day, man. And it's a lot of just, you know. And I can imagine tests. that only just builds the anxiety a little a bit. A little bit. A little bit. But, I mean, you, what makes it funny is, you know, you're mingling with guys from other schools all across the country that's, you know, from your position that you heard about, seeing yeah. on TV and whatnot, and um, picking their brains a little bit. So, that Played makes it fun. Some Played them, against man. some of them. You know what I'm saying? So, that kind of makes it and keeps it interesting that's and just mingling with the guys and, you know. Does it kind of raise the competitiveness a little bit? Do you get to, like, you're side-by-side like, you're side side, these guys? Are like, yeah. Like, yeah, you, you definitely measure yourself put up 30, You put up 30 reps? Okay, watch this. 100%. Yeah. yeah. 100%. You definitely heavily watching the guys that go before you. I'm like, I'm gonna try and outdo them. Then you see a guy that comes after you, and it's like, ah. At what age did you realize like I could probably I can definitely go to the next level with this? <sighs> see, that's tough. That's tough. I probably say I knew I could go to college after my junior season in high school. Like I knew early on I was gonna be big because everybody around me was just looking at me like, God damn, that's a big kid. Man. How old are you? <laughs> You're like nine. You're like, you look fifteen. It's like so <laughs> so it was like there's always that. It got that my whole life. And you know, people always say, How tall are you? You play something, da da da. But as far as like physical ability, I always play sports. I started my first sport was baseball in like elementary school. Um so I always was interested in sports, but as far as how good I was, I probably say I didn't realize I had a shot until my junior season. After my junior season, that's really where I kind of started, uh, for lack of better words, when I really started kicking ass. Yeah. Um, and that's when a lot of the scholarships started rolling in. And then on uh, my senior year, um, I knew I was going to school. As far as pro, I can't say that I know when I was going pro because I've always had like a harder journey. I was always a late bloomer. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just started really playing football until my freshman year of high school. Um, and I sucked then, even on the JV. And I just gradually got better throughout my years of high school. And um, my senior year, yeah, I'd say senior year definitely clicked as far as, you know, saying I, I know I'm going to college. And then college was a bit of a journey because, like I said, I got there, recruited heavily. But my first couple of years, I wasn't playing. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of hard to say that I know I'm going to go to the league and you're not really playing on, you know, Saturdays. Gotcha. Right. Um, but once I finally did get my chance and I got out there and I started, you know, going to get some of the guys and, um, you know, getting a feel for how I was, who I was as a player, um, I'd say about halfway through that season, I started feeling like, all right, yeah, I, I might need to get that call at the end of the year. I went through my whole final season and I only gave up one sack and that one sack was only because nobody was getting open. <laughs> Got, yeah, <laughs> so the like, quarterback had to hold the ball a little longer and, you know, the you play. Can do so much. Yeah, you can only do so much, you know what I'm saying? But so I would have had zero. Otherwise but, holding. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want to get that flag, but I ended up giving up the sack instead. But yeah, that was my only one all year. And I uh, played against some pretty good guys that year across the board. Um, one of them being Vic Beasley was one of those guys. Damn. He was at Clemson at that point in time during my final year. So, um, yeah, I had to play against some guys like that. And um, only giving up one sack. If I have not played that much before that point was like, solidified it for me. Damn. Okay. So you said Vic Beasley. Like, did you grow up with anybody else that uh, 
went to the league like did you anyone from yeah. your high school yeah. like so like who did you like see from a young age that you were like okay he's coming with me like i, I know he's like he had to skill like who for sure like i uh played against tyrod taylor in the playoffs mm-hmm. um and then i played with cam chancellor um in high school and college cool. yeah he was my quarterback in uh, high school, he played quarterback and safety. We we knew I knew he was going. I knew he was going to the league when he played safety with that broke arm because he broke his arm. He couldn't play quarterback, so he only had him playing safety. And he was still out there knocking people's heads off. That's crazy. So yeah, so I kind of we kind of knew he was going to do that at that point in time. Um, played with him in college. Also another one of my teammates from high school went uh, Leroy Reynolds. He played linebacker in special teams and he played wide receiver in high school too. But um, he went as a linebacker to UVA, and then um, he went undrafted to the Jaguars and uh, played nine years after that, I think it was. Wow. And then um, another one of my boys, one of my best friends, Bobby Massey, uh, we were recruited together, and I was recruited with uh, Kyle Long. Uh, we all were recruited together. That's how I got to meet those guys early on in high school at one of the camps, um, which, you know, Kyle went first round, yeah. and uh, Bobby ended up playing 10 years. Still cool with Bobby to this day. Uh, I talked to Kyle occasionally. Um, who else was from down that way around my time? Um, as far as from the city, I think the, I mean not I think, but obviously like the yeah. Mike, the Vicks were like yeah, Vic, huge. They were it. before me. Yeah, yeah. They were before you. I know they were huge in that area. Yeah, yeah. Marcus, who, were they idols for you growing up, like for, in the football world, or who, who was your idol? Absolutely. I mean, obviously from the area, it's gonna be Mike Vick and uh, Alan Iverson. When I was growing up, those were the two main guys that we knew was from our area. Um, also Bruce Smith. Oh, yeah. Um, yep, he's from my area. Damn, I didn't even um, realize that. Yeah, man, we had some dogs um, come out of the area. Um, but as far as, like, idolizing when I was growing up, I'd probably say my favorite player. My favorite player, like, just football player of all time was always Ray Lewis. Um, yeah, just because I loved his passion. I loved his energy. He was always going hard, always working hard. And he was, like, one of the best motivators of all time. Um, probably after that. I would probably say um, Julius Peppers, and oh, then yeah, bro, he bro, was just watching freak, bro. He was a freak, bro, like just a monster, bro, just a monster, bro. Like that was Man, the that things is. he used to do, bro. And I was watching a podcast the other day, and they were saying he had a total career. I think he had eleven interceptions. Yeah. I was like, how you get eleven yeah. interceptions That's with good. your hand in the dirt, yeah. bro? It's like that. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> disgusting. That is unheard of. And then probably my favorite lineman of all time. Um, it's tough. I ha- actually have two. Um, the first one would have been. Um, Jonathan Ogden growing up. Oh, dude, me too. Yeah, yeah. right. He was he was he was a dog, man. Absolutely. And then uh, my second one is gonna be uh, my trainer, LaCharles Bentley. Ooh. Um, yeah, nice. bro, he was he was a sad like cool. Ogden played the game and played tough, and he was nice to tackle. He but really, like, LaCharles was body really, people. They, that I would say physically not more dominant, but I think Jonathan Ogden kind of created not created, but like paved the. Yeah, for that left tackle. Sculpted that left, left tackle. tackle. Yeah, yeah, being 100%. that blind side. Uh, like, I got your back. You don't got to worry. You don't got to worry about nothing. It's like, he got him. We're going to worry yeah. about the other four. You're gonna, who's going to handle that? Me. I got you. I'm exactly, yeah. exactly. And yeah. Chuck was just, yeah. just dominant. Just, he's just body people. So you um, didn't say uh, Orlando Brown, but, but I did see you wore number 78 at one point in your like, career. That's what I wore growing up. And I was like, that's See, man, up. 78 was given to me. My that. number that I, my number of choice was always 70. Okay, just I saw I saw you rocked a couple, I think 69 at one point. Yeah, 69 was in Cleveland. Even that was um, given to me. Yeah, if I had a choice, it was going to be 70 or 71. 70 because of my high school number, and I always wanted to rock 70. I just kind of like, it was just like that. Yeah, it's just the strong. Yeah, it was the, no, it was the number. The, the, that's a good dependable number, right? Yeah, there. yeah. I love lineman numbers, man. The, you know the 60 to 8, like to nah, 79 right. range is But a if great, you have that, spot. like the lower lineman numbers, like the 70s means mm-hmm. you're athletic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're the tackle, yeah. and then the 60s, <laughs> the are, the tackle, the 60s tackle, are the centers yeah, and yeah. the guards. Yeah, yeah. 60s and 50s. 60s and 50s. Like, this is the person who's going to write you down. You feel me? Yeah. But see, 52 isn't a isn't a center. 52 is a linebacker. You know what I mean? It's also, you got to. Linebacker, DN. It's funny, yeah. bro. There's definitely stereotypes to numbers Facts. in the football field. Of like, oh, 100. No, you're not a 61. You're definitely more. Of I think a it's 67. in every sport. Like, <laughs> when they changed my number to 30, I was so upset. I'm like, I'm not a fullback. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Like, what do I, I don't, I don't, like? What do 30, you mean? 30 kind of swaggy now for the running backs. Yeah, Let's give it a couple guys. See, that made I like it a little... the single digit D lineman in college. Like your Jadavian Clowney back Yo, in the day, rocking. If you got a single digit, you got to be like, a dog. Oh yeah, absolutely. You have to be. You can't be soft and no one on the D line. No, 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 no. I need at least 10 sacks. Like anything like that. Like yeah. If you have five, or if you have six, like six, I need I need at least ten touchdowns. That's only acceptable if you're in the interior. Let's say, oh, you say six four. You talking about for skill position? Yeah. Oh yeah, skill position. Yeah, yeah. If you can rock a single digit, yeah, I need at least six tubs. Yeah, huh? seven. 
Yeah. yeah or a it, thousand, like a thousand to fifteen hundred yards if you're not gonna get that. that. I'm just I'm sorry, I need it. I need that. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a prime number right there. No doubt. No you, doubt. You mentioned earlier uh about the piss test for the combine. How early did you have to worry about the piss test for <laughs> Oh shoot, you uh like for yourself. Like was that when when was that an issue? So I've always kinda I've always been a learn the rules and play the game between the rules kind of guy. So uh-huh. in college, you knew, like, all right, you could pass with a screener. Mm-hmm. So whenever so in college, they would tell you the day before or, like, two days before, you got to piss ass on this day at 745 in the morning. So the screener, you can get up 3 o'clock in the morning, knock the screener back, stay up playing Call of Duty, drinking water for, like, the next two hours and whatever, piss three times, you're good. You, it's yeah. covering you, yeah. it's blocking your system. The league, though, the league, <laughs> they tell you, so you know you can piss at this combine, so it's like just stop as soon as you're done with college, pretty much. Or like maybe like go for like um, that month, or go for like the first little bit of January, and then stop because mm-hmm. you got it takes thirty days to get out your get taste, out your system naturally. Right. So you just stop, and then once you get to pass the combine, you have the symposium, and they tell you at the symposium, your piss test window is from August, not August, April twentieth. 420 ironically right of course they want to start they want to start then right start on 420 ends on august 9th so somewhere between that window you're gonna get pissed at big window exactly you're gonna get pissed at it one time once you get pissed at it that one time you're good until the following year Mm. there's nothing to worry about but but you just had to wait for that one you knew that one was coming either during otas mini camp or training camp so whenever your group gets called during one of those team activities Mm -hmm. you're good until the following year so it was kind of easy to Stay with them. It's a one and done situation. Yeah, God, yeah, God. exactly. It was, but only time the guys really you see guys getting in those issues is when they end up in the program because of a DUI type situation. So once you end up in the program, whether it's because of weed or alcohol, <clears throat> you get piss tested once a week. You can't piss dirty, uh, and that's yeah. where people see during the season like, okay, this guy fails for weed, blah, blah, blah. he was already in the program, so now it's a bigger. That's why it seems like a bigger deal than it actually should be, but because they were already in the program. That makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Were you were you were you smoking during your league time? You got ninety percent of the league smokes. That's what I, that's, yeah. that's, all I, that's that's all I've ever heard. Yeah, that's what everyone says. Nobody seems concerned. Nobody's worried about the mm-hmm. test or nothing like that. But then, like, why the fuck do people like Le'Veon Bell? Did, like, why did those like guys continue to get in trouble? The Garrett Blunt and all that. No, like, no, I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. Fuck all that. Why is Justin Blackman, like, not in the fucking league? Like, like, why can't Josh Gordon, like, why did they take, like, the person who was supposed to be a it's, generational talent away from us? Like, is it because they were both in it programs? Was, it was, yeah, it was the bad time, bro. It was a bad time. And you was getting in trouble for other stuff outside of weed. So then when you're in the program, you can't smoke any weed. And people still try to, like, get over. You can't finesse the system, bro. I'm like, once sure. you're in the program, you're in the program. Once you got to play. Yeah, you got to play it by the rules, dog. You're getting pissed tested once a week. And mind you, it doesn't matter whether you and your team stayed or not. Like, they will come to wherever you are. Like, one time I was driving. Um, driving back to my team. I was in Virginia playing in Cleveland, driving back to Cleveland, getting ready to report for camp, mm-hmm. one of the camps, mini camp or regular camp. And I'm riding down the highway and the guy calls me and says, hey man, yeah, you know you scheduled for a piss test um, here today. And I said, all right, well, I'm on the road right now. I'm on my way back to Cleveland. I'll be back in a couple hours. He said, all right, um, where exactly are you on the highway? <laughs> so I said, I'm on interstate, I'm starting, I'm on interstate 70, like, Passing exit 67. He said, All right, I'm call you back in like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Hang up the phone, call me back. He said, All right, get off at this exit. I'll meet you at this hotel. And he met me at a hotel off a random random hotel off the exit to do my piss test in the hotel bathroom, bro. Yeah, they not playing. They will come they get you. They say you don't get time. No, they will come get you off the interstate. They will come get you overseas. It's, you you got to take the yeah, When it's your time, this is your time to get your piss test, bro. They have people everywhere. That They're will. coming to get you. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they will find like somebody in your black. location. Jesus Christ. Yeah, they will find somebody in your location, bro. That's crazy. That's <laughs> intense. It's time for your that's that's, that's that. intense. There's no, get, there's no getting. I mean, but once you get your one, though, you're done. Unless you're in the program, then it's every week. But that shit sucks. I never wanted to be in the program, so that's why I just, I would stop. When every every off season, I would stop for my 30 days. So I got my piss test, piss clean, and then get right back to it, bro. But, I mean, a lot of guys rock with it because, as y'all know, it's a much better substitute for pain as opposed to taking oh, a bunch absolutely. of pills and a bunch of ibuprofen and all this other stuff. You already got to take tore it all on game day for your already hurting ailments and, st- and sprains so, and everything. Can you? There's a fat chunk of hash right where you're Ooh, at right Oh, now. okay. <laughs> I, don't wanna, I don't wanna mess that up. Can you imagine if uh, 
they gave Calvin Johnson just cannabis bro. instead of just giving him all the different bro, that they doped him up with. So much better, bro. Like, so we would better. still have him, most likely. He'd probably 100%. just been like, like be recently retiring. 100%, bro. Like, he would just been recently retiring sometime in the last, somewhere in the last three-year window. He would just been getting ready to be done. Yeah. Exactly. We like, They have taken a lot of, like, you know, huge, like great talents away from us for that reason. Um, so, another question I have for you is, at what point did you realize you wanted to get into the cannabis industry? Ooh, that's an easy one. Um, so I was drafted to Denver. Let's just start there. Um, yeah, well, that so, makes sense. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? To Denver. So, yeah, that, that's what kicked it off. And I was there um, when they went recreational day one, January 1st, um, and just kind of we had practice that day. So me and my, me and my buddy left from practice, changed out our Broncos gear so we weren't looking all hot going down there to buy weed. And I uh, went downtown to one of the dispensaries. Every dispensary we passed, the line was out the oh, door, I can down the block, and around oh, the corner, God. man. And then that's kind of like, you know, obviously coming from North, where there's that stigma in your mind that weed's a drug, you know, is you get in jail time, da 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 da, whatever. Right. And it's the big stigma around it. But mm-hmm. then once I went to Denver, man, recreational that day, and I saw those lines of people and just the, the mix of people that was in there white, black, Hispanic, old, young, old, young yeah. mm-hmm. like, it was just kind of like, all right, this is really for everybody like everybody really gets down on this Absolutely. so it's kind of like you know what i'm saying yeah. so it kind of just opened my mind up to the real world of cannabis yeah. and then um you know you see people out there in wheelchairs and yeah. fucking oxygen tanks and stuff coming to buy weeds like it really can't be all with what society try to make it out to be when you yeah. got everybody here like this and like i've always noticed man you know you got people come together and <clears throat> Alcohols involve a lot of madness might ensue. I haven't been in any instance where there's weed involved and people got crazy. Usually people are more yeah. chill, more happy, you know, it's a, it's a better, more positive vibe, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And so it's kind of always been something that I noticed that bring people together. Um, you, you know, you can get a group of people fire up a J and, you know, you can be a, a room of strangers and everybody acting like they they known each other for five years, you know what, yeah. what I'm saying? So it's always been something that I feel like it brought people together um, along with its own medicinal benefits, man. But yeah, man, that experience in Denver definitely will open up my eyes to the world of cannabis and change my perspective. Do you, uh, now, obviously, being in Denver at the advent of recreational and obviously, like, an emerging cannabis market, all sorts of crazy stuff happening, did you ever, in your adventures of trying out all these new cannabis products in the recreational market where things are a little bit more accessible, uh, have an experience where you got, like, too high by chance? Have you ever been too high? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm a relatively People small admit guy. That, man. It's a lot it. easier for me no, to get way too high. I, I'm telling you, man, know, body, you body weight had nothing to do with it. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. An edible will hit anybody's <laughs> soul if you eat enough of it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, I ate a, uh, so my first experience was the super strong Chiba Chews. I know y'all oh, remember yeah. those uh-huh. when they first dropped. Mm-hmm. I think there were like 100 milligrams of candy at first, and I ate one of those, and, um, sat in my apartment in Denver and I completely forgot that I ate it. Oh, shit. And that's like, I know I was in the twilight zone um, and the goddamn room was spinning. Mm. I have done that with a <laughs> brownie. Out. I've made that same sad mistake with a brownie <laughs> where you eat half of it and try to wait an hour, hour and a half. Like, I don't feel like thing. You eat the rest. Oh, and no. I tried to go out to eat and then I ended up with the Mr. Krabs face. Oh, no. I'm um, sitting right there at the table. Um, oh, I got an accident one time. Because I ate an edible. I oh, forgot that I ate an edible. Too high dry. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a mistake. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Don't was it the bad. spatial awareness? Was it the depth, or was it just not paying attention? It really wasn't my fault. Oh. It kind of was, but I really it was. A, it, I went through a yellow light, but the guy on the other side looked like he was getting ready to stop, and then he changed his mind oh, halfway okay. through. So I didn't change my mind. I kept going, yeah. and he second guessed his decision and went right through the light that's and hit fault. me. Yeah, yeah. That's why. I, that's what I thought. But you know, insurance thought otherwise. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> It is what it is. Nah, man, but I've definitely been there before, um, primarily with edibles. Weed, not so much. The worst I've come with weed was I fell asleep in the middle of an NBA Live game playing my homeboy. <laughs> he rolled these damn baseball bat jays, bro, and I'm like, and he just keep he just keep passing them out like it's nothing. He, I can hang with him now, but back then it was an issue. <laughs> <laughs> I've done it over live. Just like... I wake up and I just hear my name being called. Like, they're on me. They're on me. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> no. I threw a grenade. No. I was sitting there with a the controller in my head like this. Slump. I woke up and I'm down by 30. Jesus. Yeah, I mean, the edibles yeah. is a different game than the flower, I feel like, as far as just getting 100%. too high. It's so, Go ahead. What I was going to say, with the edibles are an issue, do you, do you dab? 
Yeah, I do. I don't have any. I don't have like the rig and stuff at home. Mm-hmm. I don't like buy it. But when I'm hanging like with Seth or anybody else from the shop, then you know, yeah, I get in on it or whatever. I used to not mess with it because I used to think that thing looked like an oversized crack pipe. That's but, a common um, sentiment I hear. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I used to. But then once I finally like got involved out here in Maryland, I took a couple. Um, I'm, I'm cool. I rock with it a little bit. I just don't keep it in my crib because my son is a little too active, yeah, and he fair. knows how to figure stuff out. And I don't want him to figure out a torch. And, you For know, sure. Like, yeah. And that's that's why, like, I like when I talk to people and like make my recommendations. I say, like. Go with the electronics, man. Like the electronics are so much more convenient for that shit. Facts. But uh, for Ken fam that don't know, uh, when you say Seth, we're talking Alchemist, we're talking Eden, we're talking Temple, we're talking Mogul, we're talking Facts. Equity, we're talking I got all, all the that socks. Good stuff. Chesapeake Apothecary. And part owner, but yeah, Morgan repping over there got the socks on the yes, sir. Eden hat. I'm on their payroll. You're, deck, you're decked out. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna pretend I'm not. He's Vincent. I'm on your not payroll. Gonna lie I'm not gonna lie about it. Hey man. But that's hilarious because when they you, <laughs> but we appreciate they you guys when you're pulling up they were like do you think he dabs or do you want to does he want flour i'm like get him flour and they were like why i'm like because black folk don't dab that much <laughs> not trust. that often no because no, it's not, not i was like literally because like when you see the torch our first thought is a crack pipe yeah, yeah facts like so facts. like most of us like now once you get us you past that me? we're all into it right? but like at first initially i'm like nah I, don't, I started that a long long time ago but i know the first thought i had when i saw that shit i mean back in the day the first saw time New jack city i was like nah i'm good bro back in the <laughs> day it was a me- it was literally a metal nectar collector with a rubber handle that i'm like see, bro you cannot t- like i'm heating this up until it's red hot see, and i had already it. said yes to a bunch of other drugs so when I saw him heating, I'm like, damn, am I going to do crack? <laughs> I was like, Is this what's I, next? I was like, man, I, I really thought my list would stop, but like, mm. and then like, they're, and then they're like, I'm going to say no now, but like, I, we're here now. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a changed man nowadays. We're like, here I'm now. really a plants fan. But I, I was like, shit. And they're like, no, nah, dude, it's just dabs. It's CHC concentrate, dab, like cannabis, or whatever they described it. We concentrate. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that means. They're like, you're just going to be super high. Holy fuck! I was super high. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, that first dab. Wait, that, yeah, that's that's right do you have a Do you have a first dab story? Oh uh, yeah. Well, that's like uh-huh. memorable or not memorable at all. <laughs> I mean, I, I have no I, idea. I, I, I do, but I probably shouldn't tell it. <laughs> we tell can it. edit anything out. <laughs> Yeah. Our no, safe word is uh, banana bread. Yeah, yeah. Banana <laughs> bread, <laughs> pineapples. <laughs> nah. So, um, I mean, the first time I ever did a dab. That shit hit me right in the fucking forehead. Oh, yeah. Like I, 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 that was like a, a head high like no other. But um, somewhere within those first three to five experiences, yeah, that's a good one. Um, one of my buddies from the shop. I'm not gonna name any names. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> 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 Tried to you know hit me with a booger dab. I feel like um, I can guess who this was. Yeah, I I feel like we probably could ha- take a strong guess. I mean, I I was at y'all's Halloween party. I saw the you know the, who the, the dabbers are. You know I saw the, the table. Yeah, you know who the real dabbers are. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to blow my chest off. <laughs> nah, it was cool. But um, threw a booger in there. I hit it, and like I tried to like be a professional at this point in time, and like hit that shit for a long time. Oh no, and that was a mistake. Yeah. Um, and when I went to go cough and like get let air out but get air back in i couldn't get air back uh. in like I, that <laughs> shit locked up for a second i was like oh no nah, this is it this is it i'm I, done i was looking like fred sanford i'm coming i'm coming elizabeth like no nah, that was i was i was oh, i was really scared for a second i'm not gonna lie uh i just had to like tell myself mentally calm down try to do it in my nose and out my mouth and eventually <laughs> it opened back up and i was cool but for like a split 20 seconds I thought I was about to be out of there. <laughs> you thought you were signing off. <laughs> I thought I was out. I thought I was out. I was like, this is it. What's your favorite product from your lineup? From your company? Your company. Of, out of any so of those brands. For me personally, I'd probably say I love our equity shatters. Okay. okay. Um, because like you like I said, I'm a I'm a joint guy. On there, or just I don't I don't dab with it, so like the shatters, I still so the shatters so the shatters I can roll into like a little snake and throw that in there mm-hmm. just how yeah. my flower, I put the snake in there, put the flower on top. Yep. And I like those I mean I like the bubble hairs too, but for, to me the shatter hits a lot harder when I roll it in the J. So that's true. So I, I kinda ask you it's a loaded question. Um ha, have you ever smoked how often have you consumed, I should say, your hash? 
Hmm, yeah, hash. Hash. <clears throat> so it's okay because I know but, not a lot of people are hash smokers. <laughs> no, nah, if I have it, um, so I let my medical card go since um, I, since we are recreational, sure. so I smoke primarily flour. So, um, right, but fine. when I did have my medical card, I would do the hash probably like a couple times in a month. Um, just depends on how I was feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, I know they were sending out sending us regular samples in the beginning when we were first making the stuff, so I had it all the time. I was using it damn near every day. Um, if I, I could, I would see myself using it every day, but I mean, I just don't have a medical card anymore, so I sure. don't get it that often. But I was using it, I'd say, at least once a week before. So I want you to, I want you to try something. Oh, um, what we got. So, so this is a piece that uh, I just got recently from uh, It's Many Moons Glass, but this is for hash specifically. Mm. So be careful, don't touch this yet. This is getting hot right now, so this is a uh, turp iron. Um, so I'm gonna load this oh, with uh, some of your temple ball down in here, um, and I'll help. I'll help you. Co- I'll coax you through it. Yeah, I said we get through. Um, <laughs> and it, this is like for to me one of the best ways and the purest ways to experience this kind of a product. Yeah, I think the temple ball is what does the best in this because it melts the best. I have put the temple um, ball in the J before too. Oh, I've done it like twice. And I got I got you got the baller jars out now, which is yeah. fantastic. Yeah, eighths are just fucking just yeah. big old. Of yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, Ridiculous. Just What's makes that? The Mandarin heart. Sunset. Just makes my heart. Uh, yeah. Yep, Mandarin Sunset. And then I've got. I just actually. What was in that uh, joint? Well, or that King Palm was mm. the gelato. Ca- no, fuck. It was. There was two different bubble hashes in there from y'all. And then I got the gelato cake Moroccan. And okay. Too. Okay. Um, we just got the sugar, I got more temple balls sugar cookies. Uh, temple balls too. I think. Yeah, the sugar cookies temple ball. I just. I don't think enough people consume hash because of how it, it's kind of difficult <laughs> if you don't have the correct pieces. Like, this was something I specifically went out of my way to get. Morgan has some pieces com- has coming to him, too. Yep. Yeah. I got one from the same artist coming to. You go out of your way to, like, get that kind of thing. You know what I mean? I say it's a lot of our, like, older patients that are, like, hip to what's up with the hash. They, like, they know what time it is, but well, especially when we drop the Moroccan hash. It's so funny. Um, I'm going to put her on blast because my grandparents don't want this podcast, but my aunt one time uh, at a family event, we I showed up and before my grandparents got there, she gives me her old like dugout and one hitter. And she's like, here you go. I found this when I was cleaning out in storage. Um, I'm giving it to you before your grandparents get here so they don't see it. But uh, I figured you might want it want it uh if you want it and i was like yeah no that's super cool i'll take that so i took it home i cleaned it up but she was talking about she's like yeah when i used to smoke uh, i just loved smoking hash it was my favorite and so she's talking about the old headway that where they smoke the hash where it's uh on like a little metal spike under a cup that's yeah. my favorite i did oh that in college God. i love that shit bro oh my you ever, had, you ever done it like <laughs> no. that so it's a, like it's called a hash spike um, yeah and what we would do is we'd actually have a cup but facing upright and then you have like a st- paper clip or whatever the fuck just stuck down on the bottom sticking upright yeah. you put the piece of temple ball rolled up nice on there if it's real good quality hash you should be able to get that to kind of smolder like not burn and not melt but like like an incense essentially yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what i mean just kind of keep releasing smoke and just kind of do its thing until it burns out um and we would put a paper towel right on top or like some kind of whatever lid and let it just let it go after you like torched it or uh heated it up and then just so kind the of, cup fills with smoke yeah just just sip off the top, just like pull air from, you know what I mean? From Basically what's made a damn there. temple ball it, volcano. It's like, Basically, yeah, yeah. yeah. But like, that's the old, it's crazy, man. Like, hash is so sick to me. Like, <laughs> just, I, I, I'm, I'm so happy that there is hash. But yeah, yeah no, I just put the shit. So let me see the knife way too, haven't you? Oh, I've uh, seen it. Never. Uh, I would you never don't do that. Don't do it. No, no, just don't. I, would, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> this is even like his V1. So what I'm, what we're going to do or what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to help. I'll get you through this part and then I'll hand it to you. So what, I'm just holding it here and mm-hmm. kind of let it kind of, quote unquote, activate and start to kind of melt a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then once it's ready, I'm going to turn the temp down a little bit and then we'll touch down. And then you'll kind of, I'll <laughs> pass it to you. Touch you'll down, grab baby. this. That's just be careful with it because it's not the world's strongest uh, thing here. This is a, um, a soldering iron that he modded with this piece on it. Duh. And that's sick um, yeah. to allow you to, to, to do this like con- uh, controlled. It's I think at 450 right now. Um, and then you'll tap it in pull out up to about here like where the holes i don't know if you can see there's little holes in there and that that's where oh, the, the airflow is going to come through um and that's where it's going to kind of quote unquote carpet imagine no your real family car- seeing you do this <laughs> they probably like what the hell <laughs> see, this is, is the best man on? it's just like there's such this is a combination of fucking the bc times of consuming hash and 2024 man like this is the future <laughs> hey do you see it starting to bubble down there yeah i see it like it's starting to go down yeah there it is i can see it on top it's and a it's, really nice hit 
I bet. It's such no, a it's good very, experience. Very, very refined. And I think you'll, I think, I'm hoping you really enjoy and appreciate like your, your product. You're going to understand why those like 70 year olds are reminiscing Going about, crazy. Yeah, why they reminisce over that shit. It makes so much more sense. <laughs> yeah, I am watering it down. I mean, J's and shit. Literally, me hitting this piece with Trav right, convinced me to go sure, and buy that, one for my own. Glass right there. Like that yeah, I'll dip for you. Go ahead. Deep breath. The sounds okay, of you. the rocket are, taking off. You. Damn. Mm -hmm. There's no water percolation, unfortunately. Uh, no. But it is such, I think, great Ooh. flavor. And like, just like almost pure terpene expression. All getting absolutely fucking smacked. Mm. Yeah, it. boy. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, so you got water it's a it. little bit. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. Ooh, <coughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah, that is you in the chest. Mm -hmm. Shit. Clean though, right? Hell yeah. And then now, why I fucked up? <coughs> <coughs> I was trying to talk while I still had smoke. <laughs> Been there. I was getting ready to say the fucking taste. Oh, that shit came too strong. Yeah. Ooh, no. <laughs> that shit came too strong with that. Yeah, man. I mean, you're getting what? Six. So it's 6.5 terps. Shit. Just so you know, your product is good. 2.3 yeah. limonene, uh, 1.7 caryophylline, and then a little slurry of other stuff in there. But like, it's just so sick that it's just pulled off. The, it's pulled off the plant. You know, and you're yeah. fucking rolled up and ready to like, just waiting for you to get fucking smoked. Right. How much more smack is that than like just put put it in? The, <coughs> the thing I like about it is with that, you can taste it a lot more as opposed to when you just roll it in a J mm -hmm. with yeah. the temple balls. Like it adds a little bit more flavor, but that shit you taste. I did kind of give him a trip. <coughs> that not my trip. That's not my fault. You, no, you good. Yeah, you definitely. <laughs> I'm not tripping. He literally was just talking but, about that. I'm not tripping. And then I kind of just did another one. I'm not like, tripping. Yes. No, no, I know. That shit is uh, um, <laughs> set the rest of the day off right. <laughs> For fucking sure. Absolutely. Nah, man, it's 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 just I wanted like I was really curious to see your Oof. your like how you felt about consuming it this way. So, would you use something like that, or would do you prefer the ease? Do you think it's because of the accessibility for other people like that? Just kind of putting it in the flour to up the ante and get that extra. It's definitely for the ease of accessibility. Yeah. It's a lot more convenient. It's quicker. Um, probably I'd say just for most people. Like if you actually want to get the full taste and the full punch of it that's going to give you that but if you just want something to increase the potency in your j or something just real quick mm -hmm. then yeah for the convenience of it Smack. people are still throwing on flour just like that i go on a whole fucking tangent they get annoyed with me i'm sure because like <laughs> i talk about like it's a very it's very mindful it's very patient because like you see I, I gotta be very like yeah i gotta wait hover it across but it's it. worth it he's, he's got a whole new set of uh, morgan cop uh, the, uh, uh these fucking it's bowl pieces now like I'm, I'm gonna pump that. We're getting to the point where now you can just use any fucking bong and, and smoke hash. Like this yeah, is so basically, the future we needed, man. I ordered. I he refers to them as hash slides, and basically, I would just replace my banger with it, and it adds and do effectively like a column chamber of, of just this part that just slots into the joint. Damn. But yeah. Fucking hash. That's legit. Man. That's pretty tight. Okay. Does it hit though? Yeah. Sure like, and you feel that? Like it definitely like you feel every. If, I don't know. I, I get like real goofy about it. Like if you feel like you really feel the plant. Yeah. It's not. It's different. Way different than a dab. Like dab, I feel like punching the forehead. I feel like you felt that more. Yeah, like, I was like, right in the chest. chest you're, kind of your face, and you're like, yeah, fucking that whole that whole yeah. cannab, every cannabinoid is <laughs> yeah. like beating you up a little. bit. I know it yeah. sounds weird, but like hitting a hash that way reminds me of my very first dab. Interesting. And I, like I, I know that sounds weird because like. I know, that's kind of how I feel you right now. Yeah. Like. That's exactly reminds you. Yeah, because my, all my other dabs I've taken now don't remind me of my first one, like the way that it hit me in the chest, the way that yeah. I started sweating, all that. It, like, well, like I don't really get that as much anymore. But that my first, like every hash that I take puts me back at that first time where I'm sweating. I feel that in my chest. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's weird. No. Next question for you: What's your favorite strain in Maryland? Ooh, in Maryland? Yeah, in yeah. Maryland. Only. And then and everywhere after that, because I want to know that too. Yeah, so that's a very different, unfortunately, selection. Yeah, it is. 
in Maryland, I'd probably say right now, it's got to be the Florida Kush. Yeah, like that's solid. Amnesia? I like Amnesia, but I'm just not a sativa guy. I mean, I am, I am, I am to an extent, but my favorite go tos is always Indica. Yeah, Compound Z. Compound Z is cool. I fuck with Compound Z. Okay, but fo- okay. Yeah, Florida but Kush is solid. Cam- Florida Kush is reliable. No, it's it's a great strain. Now, two of my, three of my guys in the back in the lab, they love Compound Z. Every time that shit comes in there, they let me get three of them. Let me get two of them. If we got any left, let me, come, let me come get whatever we got left. I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong. Strain has been pumping. I don't know what I don't know what they changed, but the last like six months, they've been pumping out some fire ass yeah, flour, bro. Like I don't know what they got going on. Flour. I'm not, I'm not starting an issue, but not concentrates. But we'll handle that. We'll, <laughs> we'll handle that. <laughs> I thought he was about to say something. No, he, he was just, he he was just making the point. He was like, all right, look, let's not get ahead of ourselves. <laughs> just the flour. Not the concentrates. I cannot the edibles are good the too. Concentrates. The dew drops? The edibles are good. The new dew drops are nice. All right, we're not going to get started on that. It's like that just, <laughs> I feel like I hit a button. No, no. <laughs> it's, no it's, he's, he's been hurt. Don't, don't, okay. don't, don't worry about him. And I was just at a local uh, uh, haberdashery. And of <laughs> apothecary or whatever I guess the term Jesus would be, Christ. and and these this place had they, they were on sale for ten dollars of their own of that brand let's say that's <laughs> trade ten dollars for this gram of, of that concentrate I'm like that ten dollars for a gram it. which the only reason Jesus. I would ever buy that and I would is to bake I do I do take advantage of that sometimes like if it's if it's they're clearly admitting it's boo for like whatever like down to maybe i'm wrong maybe uh, could maybe, be close to expiring maybe there was a, a different reason for it but like we're willing to let it go for ten dollars man that's fool yeah that's a rare. i see some places that they just rather they'd rather eat it than let the rosin go you know or let a good product go for and it, unfortunately there's a lot of dispensaries i'd rather just throw it away than give it away at a cheap price <clears throat> and, and we try to get it away pick it back up. <clears throat> Sorry. It's- I think everybody saw that article. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I didn't see that article. I didn't see anything. <laughs> Ray Charles is the bullshit. <laughs> Who's your favorite person to smoke with? Mm, that's favorite person to smoke with. Oh, I probably... See, that's... See, that's you see, <laughs> you're putting that's, them in a tough spot. Yeah, man. I got a lot of people I like to smoke can't, with. Can't tell them. Yeah, then you're gonna uh, other I got, people I got a lot of people I like to smoke with. That's, Feelings that's are getting tough. hurt. Everybody that's why like, that I loved tough. MySpace. You had a top five where you could <laughs> let people flavor. know These where they focus. stood. <laughs> Damn. Oh. You do something cool, we might open up to a top six. <laughs> Shoot. Uh Probably, see that's see that's hard to say because I smoke with my little brother, I smoke with my pops, I smoke with my <laughs> uncle, I smoke with my cousin. All right, you can say got, family. Of, your like, family, can family, your say, family can be one person. Family can be one person. Yes, right. that's a collection. Smoke with family. Oh. Family be one person. I had to say the second would be well, two people probably my boys, uh, Bobby and At. Nice. Gotcha. Yeah, it had to be those two guys. Just, just chop have, it up and have just yeah, chop it good up vibes. Like that's, mm-hmm. that's we used to get on the sticks, kick each other ass, and Madden two K. Now that was a build up question because Uh-oh. this is the cool question. Oh, oh boy, who is the most unexpected person in your life that you ended up smoking with? Like mm. someone you never thought you were going to smoke with, and you ended up smoking with them. Like grandma or something. Like, yeah, you know, like, <laughs> like my librarian. Like you know what I'm saying? Like third grade teacher. <laughs> uh, I got, I got one. I'm Jimmy just, Fox. I'm just not sure. <laughs> are, we, are we not sure we can air it out? That's the only thing I'm not sure if I can air it out. Can right, I? Right. I don't know. And folks, see that on the Patreon. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, see, I, I got see. Obviously, one would be my mom. Yeah. Well, that caught you off guard. That's always cool. No, I mean, I was I'm surprised she was cool with it. I, mean, I knew she smoked, but I was surprised she was cool with it. Okay. Uh, the other one would probably be. Damn, man. I got a really dope one, but I just I can't say it yet. I gotta hold I gotta hold that off. So I'll probably say the next one will be probably Vaughn. Probably when I smoked with Vaughn. Vaughn Miller. Oh that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, First time I smoked with him. That's probably that's probably the time that my my rookie I was like. And keeping in mind, that's who he gave after the run up for who he couldn't name. So he he wasn't he wasn't an ant like he didn't like when a bullet, he'd hang with the rookies and shit like that. Like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was cool as shit, man. He was like, see, Baltimore. I remember watching the fucking Hard Knocks where Tony Saragusa just kept locking players into stop places, and the coach was like, "Fucking stop! We have to have meetings. Please stop locking rookies into closets and shit. We need them to like do <laughs> like, these things." Like, like yeah, that that's that it's that a, shit's goofy. Shit gets like, interesting yeah, rookie year, like, man. Von Miller, man, that's a fucking monster. Bro. Rookie dinner, real thing. Yeah. 
hundred percent. Yeah, that was, mm. that was a very real thing. Yeah, the rookie deal, having to go get the food for the vets, all that shit is a real thing. Yeah, yeah, but, Asian, yeah. I mean, it didn't get like by the time I got there, it wasn't all that aggra- overly aggressive stuff, but it's definitely was still a part of it. I mean, it's just kind of like it's like a big brother deal, man. They just welcome you to the family, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, there's a difference between like the Richie Incognito bullshit and then like what I saw with like Brian Arakpo. That man let himself get like duct taped to the goalpost, went ha ha ha, and then just like ripped it off, like just like, <laughs> like just like flexed out of it. Like, no, they, they still, <laughs> you can still get your stuff thrown in the cold tub though, for sure. That they, That's yeah, yeah. If you don't get the snacks, so you don't get the get the shoulder pads and stuff, but you might come back to your locker and all your shit's in the cold tub. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who's your favorite football team? I grew up a Cowboys fan. Oh um. But now I'm just I just kind of just go for everybody that I kind of play for, especially the Broncos since they gave me my first chance. Yeah, but um, yeah, I, I still kind of heavily go for the teams that so I either like play for or guys that I know. The skin stuff. Yeah. yeah. Who's your favorite player? To, too. Who's your favorite yeah, player currently I active? Like to see them good too. Favorite player currently? Yeah. Hmm. Yes. <clears throat> Mm. I'm a Skins fan, so I know my favorite. I mean, I don't know if I have Commanders. I have favorite. Shout I have like favorite players. Like I just have okay. like friends. <laughs> not, I do have some friends still that play. Yeah, but um, I mean, I'm just a fan of the game for real, man. Yeah. Um, PC I'm curious. Too. I'm curious to see a lot of the guys that's coming in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I like everybody in the league. Nah, awesome. man, it's just it's hard for me to say because I just love the game. You know, so I just love football in general. I mean, probably who I'm excited to see coming in. I really want to see uh, what Jay and Daniels does um, coming in. Um, I'm really excited to see what CJ Stroud does down the road. Um, his first year, I kind of had a feeling he was going to be the better between the two, between him and Bryce Young. Bruh. But what he did was just surprise the shit, man. His receiving core really came out for him too. Yeah, I was I was truly surprised. Like I had that whole team on my fantasy team. So that like, was smart. I, bruh, absolutely. That was like, smart. Yeah, no, I was very impressed. Yeah, he's got some dogs over there in that receiver room. Um, and then um, I want to. I'm really curious to see where Derrick Henry goes. I hope he goes to Baltimore, man. Baltimore. I want to. So personally, personally, I would like to see the Saquon Lamar combo in Baltimore. I'll take either. Jesus Christ! I'll I'll lose because my mind. with the way they run that offense, oh, dude, it would be smash and dash, smash and smash and dash and dash. Like they both just can do it all, Saquon man. Like, it would be. It would be bad. It would be bad. Actually, I think Lamar would allow him he, to. As long as he, lo- he would take uh, enough chairs. off. That's, yeah. uh, with like Gus, but then like would make it. it'd be okay. Like he just can't be like the sole back. Saquon, shout out to Dalvin. yes he can. Shout out to no, Dalvin I think Cook like in that like run heavy offense, he'll get hurt, bro. Yeah, but the good thing is they have like two or three. So like I said, you'll have him, Gus, and then the young guy. I think it's Mitchell is his last name. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you you can see, switch like, out those three. I also take Gus. I'd rather have Derrick Henry because like that just head down. I love that smat. I'll just fucking run you over. You know what I mean? Like Derrick Henry. He's, he's, he he's getting get up there. He does. He does. Actually, I think yeah, I think if I had to pick a favorite player, I'd probably say Lamar right now. Lamar's, he's yeah, probably solid. Lamar. Lamar, Lamar is, he's really coming into his own. And he, he is a I like the fact that he got paid and then went out there and like, all right, now I'm going to show you why I needed yeah. this money. So, yeah. I really want to know in the Super Bowl, to be that honest. Man is, that Me man too. is extremely from South Florida. He's, I love oh, yeah. Him and Kodak are hilarious hanging out together. Just yeah. like, <laughs> just What made me vibe. love Lamar Florida was through through. Uh, when he pulled a receiver off the field. Uh, or like, it was, Maybe it was a defensive player. Either way, but he was on the sideline and he literally – he called it. He didn't call a timeout. He called him over. He's like, "What's up?" He's like, "Get off the field." <laughs> you want to get us a penalty? Yeah, no, no, not because he got a penalty. Yeah, yeah, no, because he he like replaced him. Oh damn! Yeah, so subbed Lamar, him out. Lamar subbed him out. Lamar oh, so subbed him out. I saw. He him had a time. coaching moment. Yes. Oh. Yeah, and it, it was so funny. He was like, he was like "What have you just got beat?" Oh yeah, buddy must have been doing bad. Must have been down awesome. bad. Yeah, Jesus man. Christ! Man knows the game. He's so smart. Like he's so Facts. good to watch just because like. About the running back quarterback. No, he's not. No, like, he's just guy, a quarterback. The guy is elite. Like, he can see everything. He's so smart. He just happens to be able to do it with his legs, too. Like, you all watch Mike Vick kind of step the, you know, start it. Facts. <laughs> get, to, get to give us a <coughs> okay, you know, I mean, We can go back to Warren Moon. Lamar's like, taking like, it to another Vic level. It, yeah. Vick took it to a space, and then Lamar's like, wait, I can also, I can do every every aspect of QB. Like, like no. all of it. Yeah. All of it, bro. He's terrible. so, Mike he's could, so Mike smart. He, it, a playmaker. That, Mike could huck it, but yeah, he's just much more of a playmaker. He's a playmaker, man. That's exactly what Cam, what Cam Newton was saying, bro. There's a difference between a game changer and a game manager, bro. Like, there's, there's a difference. Like, you can 
it's not a bad thing. It's just there's different things you expect your quarterback. Like Lamar is one of the guys where he's either going to make the right read or when things start falling apart, it's like he's still just as dangerous running around as he is and throwing the ball. Oh, but yeah. that's what you call a game changer, like a guy that has something that you unexpectedly can't handle. You know what I'm saying? Him, sometimes Kyler Murray could be that. What you call it, even um, Johnny could have been that. And like they just, they just have character. Like even with Pat Mahomes, he's not the fastest, but he has that ability to make these crazy, like off script throws, like sidearm and mm -hmm. fucking the diving person. and throwing. Mm -hmm. the movements. Like he can do kind of stuff that you just don't see people do with their arm regularly. So, but like a game manager isn't a bad thing. It's like this is just a quarterback that's not gonna lose me the game. Like we're not gonna lose the game because of you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I could put this off a uh, tool, Aaron Rodgers, uh, Tom Brady. Like what's it called? Like Cam said, Tom Brady's the most elite game manager ever he is because I can put the game in your hands and you're not going to lose me the game. Like, I can expect you to make the right calls. I think third. I personally think Peyton's the best play caller ever. I think Tom's still – You think so? Yeah. Over Tom? I, I think, think Peyton, yeah. I th really? I, I think specifically in I, those adjustment situations, Peyton just seemed to have that ability. I don't know what it was. Like, that just – that – Six cents. Like, I that's put, why I one put of them in favorite. the same class, to be honest. Uh, I mean, that's fair. I, I wouldn't yeah. hate to say tie. Yeah. But, like, one of my favorite clips ever is him and Ray Lewis. They come up. Ray audibles. Peyton checks that. He audibles. Ray audibles again. Peyton audibles. Ray audibles. Peyton calls a timeout. It's like, fuck. Like, and just gets, mm -hmm. like, stressed out about it. Like, mm -hmm. that's such a cool chess match of, like, brain play. Like Peyton definitely was, at, like, having another coach in the room, that, for sure. Is that big head? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. Was, it was, like, having a good field. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he was a super smart dude, man. He definitely took control of a couple of the meetings while I was there. Um, even during field sessions with him and Gase, it would be like him and Gase was working on a game plan in front of us, it seemed like, man. But, uh, yeah, there were definitely times he would stop and, like, we were listening to Peyton and he's going over stuff and switching it up and saying, hey, if he does this, do you do this? You know, if he's blitzing up this side, we hot over here, you run this route. And Gase is like, y'all got it? And move on to the next clip. Like, he, he was super smart, man. Like, I got, I got to agree with you there. He's definitely one of the smartest players. Like smart where he yells at Jeff Saturday, and Saturday yells back, and he's like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't mean it all like that. that. That's, that's my <laughs> – like, it changes his tone a little bit. When Facts. Get, go Jeff Saturday ball, this is, so. Football's an emotional game, man. It's all right. We know, we know what happens. Oh, yeah. That's why I was like, why is everybody getting on Kelsey's yeah. back, man? It's like all it's this, just a little All emotional. this Lamar talk, I just have a – here's a polarizing question. Uh-oh. Pick one. You have to put oh, on your boy. team. Only one. Ed Reed or Troy Palomalu? Tell me who's better. No, who are you picking? Like you got, yeah, pick one. Like who, who you just you can only have one for your team, whatever that team is. Like you gotta have one, only one. Give me Ed, cause Ed gonna take it to the house. Troy's gonna make plays. He's gonna affect the game. But if Ed get it in his hands, he's going to the crib. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like those points. See ball, yeah. get ball. Yeah, all yeah. the time. Yeah, facts. All time facts. favorite running back. Ooh, all time favorite running back. Mm. That's a lot. All time favorite running back, I would have to say it's gonna be somebody old school. Probably Barry. shit. Marshall? No. AP? Dion? Wait. No, no. Ladanian. Oh, LT. Ladanian Thomas. Okay. Probably. That was my first favorite. The second LT. Less cocaine LT. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the humble. Jesse. Yeah. Facts. Facts. He's he was a dog, player. man. Amazing, bro. He's like the he's like the first Christian McCaffrey. Yeah. Like, Kester McCaffrey's doing what he did. Facts. You know what I mean? Like, he can take it between the tackles. He can take it outside. You can throw it to him. You can run the routes. He can block. It's all around back, man. Just and he did it for it his done. whole career. For his whole career, bro. Entire career. How do you uh, – Barely got the hurt. Jets. Barely got hurt. Kind of like – Talk to the back end. I wonder – probably not Christian McCaffrey. I don't smoke. How do you think – like, how do you feel about, like, the NFL and how they handle cannabis now and, like, their versus, like – Back in the day when they were like, and then probably even before that, like, how do you how do you feel the game has evolved to be a little bit more accepting? Do you feel it's, it's a, what LeBron says about damn time? Right. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, because it's it's not a performance enhancer, like it's not steroid or something. It's Michael just something. Twenty, how many gold medals? <laughs> exactly. So it's like you know, yeah. it's just something that helps guys recover and it helps us deal with the pain when we're at home. And then you got the whole all that other stuff, you know, with the mental health and whatnot. So, I mean, it just helps in so many ways that, you know, keep guys chill, keep guys in the house, keep you relaxed, take care of the pain, help you sleep, which is one of the most important things in our career is getting you sleep, getting good quality sleep. So, I mean, <clears throat> I'm glad to see them being a little more relaxed with it, finally, um, and guys aren't, you know, risk jeopardizing their whole career just because they want to feel better. 
Do you feel like cannabis ever negatively impacted your performance on the field? Not really. Um, I mean, maybe from a standpoint of if I smoked one too many J's and I didn't watch as much film as I could have that night, <laughs> you know, so I, I passed out with my iPad in my hand. So, yeah, yeah, okay. you know. But as far as physically, no, nah, I wouldn't say it um, hindered me. Only way it would have is if I would have kept smoking Rellos. That's, that's where maybe switched the papers while I was smoking the Rellos and all that beforehand. Duchess, <clears throat> what? Wait, what flavor? I would do vanilla Duchess, uh, Rello, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like chocolate, guy. yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. chocolate man. So okay, I feel that. That don't taste as well. I like chocolate, but not in my Duchess. That's because they yeah. lasted long. That's why. <laughs> really? Yeah, these, they felt. Like, I just felt like they lasted longer. I, I'm I, felt, an I did Swisher's animal too. and smoked the Java and Mint Duchess, uh, and then the Swisher like the Sweets, the, second, the Fusion, the ones. Swisher Red yeah. Sweets. I and do the great uh, ones. It's just, it's just because like watching like certain like what league. What league just like basically just like the NBA is that who just okay? The NBA, NBA, yeah. NBA, the NBA they don't really piss test. MLB they don't really piss test like talking about. I asked a baseball the player one time. Highest paid league in the, Bro, the whole country, the MLB, and they don't dog, give a he shit. He blew me, like. blew my life. I went to this like PT center one time to get a little extra work one day during the off season, and it was a baseball player. He was had elbow surgery. He was doing rehab, <clears throat> so we got to talking and whatnot. Both was big as shit, so we just look at each other like, yo, what do you do? Oh, what do you do? <laughs> I'm a professional. You too, wow. Yeah, so type. And then uh, I was asking him, I said, yo, so like, how's y'all, like, you know, piss test protocol or whatnot for weed and stuff? He said, man, they don't piss test us for weed. Like, yeah, I was like, what? Like, huh? How is it? That's unheard of. They were about steroids. Man. Yeah, like, well, they, 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 well, they were about performance think, enhancers do think, and stuff. Do you think Shohei or Tani just fucking burning them? Just uh, uh, I don't know, probably, man. You know. Uh, they're he's probably thinking he's that from not Japan. Gonna help they're really not, not cool about it. I think his traditional upbringing wouldn't allow that. I mean, it's not going to hurt it either. If anything, like I said, it's going to help you with that pain. They have pain, too. Just different pain. Shoulders, mm -hmm. elbows, oh, back. Tommy John, yeah, the rotator cuffs. Their shit is shot by the end of their career. You feel me? So I I fully believe they probably burn it down just as much as we do. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. We need more people to come out with it. You, have you uh, ever considered going into that? What is it? The fan controlled league? You ever see that? I've seen it. Yeah. I, I, I didn't hear about it until Johnny Manziel did it. But yeah. You see the guy who threw, he like threw like six or seven touchdowns in a game. And like on the sixth one, he ran into the end zone, pulled out a joint, started hitting, like he lit it, smoked it, and then handed it to a fan. Bro. That's crazy. <laughs> That's hilarious. The closest That's I keep seeing to that was the CFL when Buddy bust out a beer. He took a beer from a fan and chugged that shit on the field. <laughs> That was funny. Jesus, nope. Yeah, that was aggressive. Right of his pants. How is it not destroyed? That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, or wet. Like, how did you? I'd... Look up the video, bro. Like, I played one play. <laughs> I think he got suspended, right. actually. That sounds probably right. That would. He, he might Moss, not have gotten suspended. Might... I think he got suspended. That's, that's crazy. Randy Moss didn't even do anything. He just bent over and got fined. Like, that's, oh, yeah. that's the NFL. They're pretty strict with yeah, celebrations, bro. Yeah, the they don't like it. Yeah, yeah, you said they don't even, they don't allow any props nowadays. What's your favorite celebration of all time? Favorite celebration? Tio's. On the star? Which one? On the star. Which one? I was going to say, okay. That was, that was mad funny. One, the, was that Ocho? The Hall of Fame funny. one? The jacket? Is that oh, Ocho? Yeah, with yeah. that question mark on it? So good, dude. That was hilarious. That was hilarious. The autograph out of the end zone is pretty good. That was a pretty good one. Good. The star got violent. What about the dance? What was it? The Ocho salsa dance? Was it in the 70s? It was like they all the linemen got together and they started doing like a whole choreographed dance. Bro. <laughs> that, sounds like, that sounds like a 70s Redskins thing. <laughs> <laughs> or the Chicago Bears. Oh, true. Maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. They did that. Yeah, <laughs> facts. Facts. I'd probably say that he had an Ocho jacket. Ocho jacket. That, that, that was that was that was hard. What were you about to say, Quest? Chug your Celsius. All wired up over there. Well, yes. I just have so many. Like, look, we're, I like talking Celsius football. Celsius fire. So know, now right? I'm trying to make a good balance between just football and Canada. Before it becomes just ever, excited about both. What's hey. your favorite left tackle? How about left guard? How about center? <laughs> <laughs> we can go through the whole. Line. We can go down the list. <laughs> 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 we can go down the list. Sir, sir, I, just I got one. I can think of one for sure. <laughs> Disclaimer: Football talk. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Smoke uh, with us and learn. What's your favorite edible on the market? Mm -mm. Ooh, good question. Let's see, I'm still with you, so can if fan. So if I'm going, if I'm going high dose to eat while you play football, no, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that, that uh, that go Betty go. It's like, no. But now nah, my favorite, my favorite, my actual favorite, though, I probably say the strawberry, um, high dose Betty, low okay. dose, like low dose. I gotta say it's probably those. See, it was the Astro Bites, but now okay. recently it's probably the wild gummies. Them? You like them? Yeah. 
like that's those. the when you said Astro Bites, that's the, the little ice, ice cream. Yeah, yeah they're yeah, all right. Yeah, they're cool, like but them. they were my favorites up until I had the wild gummies. The wild gummies is probably the best tasting gummies. I've I, had the non infused, like, and they're they're, they're, they're tasty. Reason, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Huge I, 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 can, I can see. I've why. had the non infused, and I've had the CBD versions, and they've been tasty. Okay, well, the real I haven't gotten the THC ones yet, but we're getting them in this week. Drop these giant jars, and we just. Oh, it's just delicious, and yeah. they taste just like that. You don't taste any THC in them, and I do the um, I do the blood orange one to one, uh, THC CBC before the gym because you know CBC okay. is good for energy yeah, and whatnot. Somebody that appreciates so, minor cannabinoids. Hey man, fun. hey, I do one of those for the gym, bro, and I'm good. It hit like a Celsius, and I don't gotta take the Celsius. Got, oh, no, I still take my pre workout. Fuck hey, bro, that. Hey, bro. Like I don't crust over there, dry scooping I'll and take, shit. Yeah, my mouth would be so dry. I could not eat my gummies, mushrooms, and smoke my weed and move on. No, you just drink. You drink some water with it. That's it. You just okay. You just drink the water. Okay, okay. That's so crazy. That's so crazy. Yeah, it's hilarious. I love it. No, you ever take you take pre workout or no? I have. I don't take it anymore. Yeah, I take total war, and I sent my friend to the hospital on that shit. Literally, bro. We went to the, we did a workout. He was like, "Yeah, I want to try it." And gave him some. I'm home at this point, and he calls me like, "Hey, man, like, what was in that?" I was like, thinking I gave him some drugs or some shit. I was like, "I'm sending you the label now." Why would somebody's like, "I'm in an ambulance"? I'm like, "Here's the that information." Shit, that shit had meth in it. <laughs> That's no. crazy, bro. It's it's crazy. That's wild. So you like you have an appreciation for minor cannabinoids. What's your favorite terpene? Like, what's one that you see in a strain? Like, may not be familiar with the strain, but that terpene tie in it, you're getting. Get. It's probably between. Mercine and carefully, um, okay. because those two are good for inflammation, mm-hmm. yeah, and for, you know, mercine for relaxation. So, um, yeah, probably one of those two. If I see it's got a lot of either of those in it, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, let me go ahead and try that out. I mean, if it's high in terpenes, period, I'm going for it. Yeah, okay. to avoid, hmm? do you have a terpene you avoid? No, not really. Shit make, nothing makes you like paranoid or like mm. you're too zonked out or shit like that. Nah, nah. It, that is uh, kind of always blown me when I've heard people say that. I never understood I had that feeling. Maybe it's probably the closest I, I come to that was edible. I used to. I don't know if it's because I've just dabbed and smoked so fucking much. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, right. And have handled those situations so many times where like now I don't feel it as much. But like, oh yeah, I definitely used to like avoid really? specific things. I also would bet you there's some psychosomatic things about that where I think, you know, maybe I think too much or maybe it's, as soon as I see that word, I like even I just, uh, pinene, I just say, that's the yeah. one. Terpinaline, no problem. Lemonine, no problem. But pinene somehow makes me feel a little jittery. Yeah, I say so pinene gives me a little that heart racy feeling, uh, but usually... I, but I now know that this is how I react to pining. So it's like if I'm going to smoke a strain with pining in it, it's going to be when like I'm going to clean the house or I'm going to do a big project. Yeah, pining. I'm usually found heavy in sativas mm-hmm. and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Sure you're up and moving, I guess. Yeah, yeah I got to be distracted. I got to have something really to do. If I'm smoking pining. Not as not super high. So there was a way. Really see like one yeah. percent or something like that. Poochie. Yeah, Poochie Love was like the only real one. Poochie's the big one. Kind of simmered out a little bit. So you mentioned you mentioned with your edibles, you said about like gummies and uh, taffy and uh, what's it called. Do you ever have any of the drinks? You ever like try any? Oh of them? yeah, the elixirs. Oh, yeah. the Dixies, yeah. And then like, what about like any sodas or beers and stuff in like other states? I've had those in Colorado before years yeah. ago. How do you think? What do you think about that? They're like pretty them? good. Um, long as like I don't taste the weed in it. You taste yeah. it. Yeah, I said long, I have before in mm-hmm. one of them, one of the sodas. But on um, like the juices, you normally don't taste anything. Yeah, you see, yeah I don't like it when smooth. it tastes like weed. Yeah, it's see, terrible. I don't mind it. I, yeah, that being question on the same page, I don't mind it. Like really? I don't, I don't want it. Yeah, but I don't care. If I, I am know paying for a professionally made edible, I would really rather not taste the weed. It if just I, makes if, it. If I don't care about it tasting like weed, I'll just make the edibles myself. I guess it, that's what, what's a professional, and I don't mean that a in company a silly that way. is charging okay. me money see, and uses corporately like giant big machines. See, like I wouldn't <laughs> say that. I'd almost say the professional. Now, if a chef is putting on a really nice, like catered, infused dinner. Mm-hmm. I don't want to taste the weed. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you better. Okay. Yeah. If you have you're cooking well, at a higher well, level, see so that's kind of like, like a meal. It's kind of different though. A gummy's it depends. A gummy. I like. But, I like but that, see, that's kind of the thing. They're trying flavors. to complement the flavors. You yeah, know you what I'm saying? Like, some people, like but cannabis also, isn't a flavor that you can essentially. But I feel like you ever watch some of those shows where they put someone like they're obnoxiously like they're like we're gonna grate cannabis on top of it. Oh uh, yeah, a leaf no, in it. Like yeah, that, 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 that's, that's too much. It's not parsley. I saw one where they like the skin of the chicken and took full cannabis leaves and stuffed it underneath. Like what? Um, baked like they were bay yeah. leaves like, like that doesn't well that's sense. not how that works that's no that's, yeah that probably I mean I think great. stuff like that's silly but like I have almost the exact opposite opinion of you Travis I think if in that situation where you don't have this extravagant lab setup, you that's fair 
I'm a little bit more permissible about it coming out tasting like weed because you don't have all this thousands of dollars of equipment invested in making but these gummies. I also would make it, my personal personal feeling is I prefer a live resin or flower over a distillate, and I think I can taste that too. Because the I distillate, think the lack, you can definitely taste it more. Um, but that's also because I'm prone. To, edibles fry me. And okay. that's, that's a personal thing. Edibles, uh, like, and distillate specifically because it's just THC seems to be because there's nothing else really riding along t with it and get me feeling like a little, like I can dab till King forever. King. Yeah. But if I take 100 milligrams immediately, I'll f I won't feel good. I was just about to ask, what doses of edibles, like, do you rock with if you rock with? Fives, tens. Like, I really dig the new, uh, no plug, but like the do new dew drops. Yeah, like those are good. Like, cool those low THC good. with a little CBG, CBC, my yeah. like mm -hmm. CBD. Like, let me get a blend in there. Um, Cause like, I could care less about terpene infused. It doesn't mean as much to me. I, 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 that's again, just personally, I haven't felt the effect that way, but minor cannabinoids, one to ones, like that's, and they're always on sale. Cause y'all are silly and don't want to buy them for whatever reason. Like, oh, yeah. I want CBD in my life. This is scary. I literally, <laughs> it's, it's always, bro. It's <laughs> no, so those do drop I, I, I get big high. Like fucking, okay. Like you can do that and. You can still it, get the benefits throughout the day. Good, man. I literally yeah, was in the dispensary high. the other day Facts. and heard an old Facts. guy who was like, where they were like, oh, I like this brand of edibles. And they're like, oh, well, the only edibles we have left are this one-to-one -one, one from them. Uh, it's still the same milligrams of THC, but it has also 10 yeah. milligrams of CB 10, G 10, right? CBD. And the old guy goes, oh, no, I don't want any of that CBD stuff. Right, dude, like, it, was like, like, it's like fake it makes it so like, much better. I was like, like chill like, out. It's such wild, almost like pro weed propaganda, like dare I say, like big THC like yeah being like not nah, get big high and that's what you need and that's like being funny but like that high makes you keep chasing it but when you have that balance you'd be like oh yeah, i say it's just good. about balance man. and like i've been there i've been dabbing grams a day there's no reason for that you know no, what I mean? yeah it's feeling fried pepper, all day for a little cannabin minor cannabinoids you're like okay cool i can ma monitor with you know, a little it's bit like once you get there you're not getting any higher beyond yeah. that there's a threshold yeah 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 i just want every single receptor loaded with THC, you know, <laughs> like just violently high all the time. I say it's different if you're going like sativa, hybrid, and then indica or something like that. That's different because then you're getting three different fields. So you say that, and I, I, those terms are, are, you know, very it's, not, it's, hot yeah. topics nowadays. What is your what, what is your preferred lean way to like if you have to just like you know you pick one, and then like do you feel that is a consistent monitor across strains in your experience like when you smoke if it's a labeled a sativa does it give you your sativa effects you're looking thinking for or do you find it really like for you there's a different blend that just is like this what you need your sweet spot kind of thing i'm definitely a, a majority indica person okay. for sure um, i like to have that nice mellow feel uh, if i got if i'm gonna be super busy during the day i do sativas um but i do notice the difference between different families of strains some more prevalent than others some uh, some sativas kind of hit like indicas, and some indicas feel like hybrids. Yeah. I mean, obviously a hybrid is you can get either or, so it's kind of a roll of the dice really with either or. But there are, but for me, sativas will bring me up, and then I crash on the back end like a Red Bull. So I still kind of get that indica feel towards the back end of the sativa, mm -hmm. but initially it'll have me going for a little bit. Now, if I'm just going and I got a busy ass day and I'm just not thinking about it, then I can probably bypass that. But if I'm just smoking in the sativa, get what I need to get done, and then I'm chilling, I'm going to crash on the back end like a Red Bull yeah. feel. I get that. But um, I feel like there is definitely a consistency between the two um, ex outside of the hybrid. If it says like a hybrid, but it's sativa dominant or whatever the case may be, then it's more of a roll of the dice. But if it's a pure sativa, like the amnesias and the pushies mm -hmm. and the dirt poisons, mm -hmm. then yeah, you get that. You get that daytime sativa scent. But I need my indicas, man. Keep me mellow. <laughs> Especially without That's why old heads are always like, no, we don't hit like it used to. Like, I got to keep smoking it. It's because you don't got the minor cannabinoids in there. Now you're just chasing it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, and like, mm -hmm. it's cool. Don't get me wrong. I know you got some of it. That amnesia. Mm -hmm. What is it, 41%? It's right there on the back. That, that was the first one. That's so. crazy. That's this? like... Uh, this is the Great Printer. <laughs> mm. uh, the 41%. Uh, that's like... There's one-to-one -one concentrates that are 41% THC. You know what I mean? Like, there's dabs that are 41% THC. Well, I have one with me. If, you're, if you're getting to that point... Join me. Bro. You know what I mean? Like, just join the dark side. Start dabbing. Like, holy shit. Like, I would say, speaking of that, that's how we ended up getting the amnesia in the store to begin with because my buddy I was telling y'all about earlier, no, he came out to Baltimore. This was before we had it in the store. He came out here and FaceTime me. He was catching up or whatever. 
He's like, bro, y'all got this shit in the store. He's like, I'm smoking this shit. It's like 38, 40% THC. Mm. So when he said that, I'm like, man, shut the fuck up. I haven't seen shit come across the store that's anywhere higher than 32. <laughs> you put it in the camera, and I saw it say Amnesia OG, and you, you flipped over the camera, and I could see you said the 30%. Bro, I went back to work to test beat the next day and told him, like, Colt is hiding something from us. They got this stuff called Amnesia. We need to get this in the store. And ever since we got it in after that conversation, been flying and flying all the shells, bro. And it's yeah, consistent. It like usually you get some testers, some strains that come through and they're high testers and they, they have strong that first go round and then they fall off after a while. Yeah, amnesia has been consistent. Amnesia has been consistently good no matter what the potency says, 35, 40, whatever, 38. Yeah. It's consistently good. Absolutely. What is your favorite activity to do when you're stoned? Lifting. Oh, really? For really? sure. Lifting and then probably gaming. Um, Both my favorite things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's essentials to life, yeah. basically. It kind of keeps you mentally peaceful. That's you know? physically <laughs> shit, Lifting you know high I mean? for me is dangerous because really? I don't stop. And then the next day, <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. like, I can't move my arms. Yeah, no, like, that, that, I have to just get into the zone. <laughs> he, or like, he's just rolling for three hours. Bro, I, it is so easy for That's me crazy. to stay in the gym for three hours. And it's yeah. dangerous. Yeah. So, like, yeah. If I didn't have my kids, then I definitely would probably be in there forever in the day. But I got to get home <laughs> to them. Um, obviously, obviously, kicking it with them is always fun, whether I'm high or not. But, yeah, probably personal activities. Yeah, definitely lifting and gaming. Um, Every I'm, game? God of War. All time. Okay. That's, 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 that's a solid answer. Bro, that's that's nothing beast. That's number one. Number two. Wow. Number two is probably going to be Gears of War. Okay. Um, And then after that, it's uh, sports games. Okay. Well, round two. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'd be on call. Are you going to get, get the new NCAA now that they can pay players absolutely. and like, have their names in there? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. For, absolutely. It's about the same time. But Archie Manning's right. not going to be in it. Okay. Arch, Arch Manning's not going to be in it. He didn't opt in? No, you didn't see that. I, I caught a glimpse of Bleacher Report part of my phone, but oh, I never no, read Oh, no, he article. said he's not going to be in it because he wants to focus on football. My guy. Yeah, earn it first. I mean, Queen Ewers is still the starter, so it kind of He's getting spread. roasted online because they're like, hey, you know you don't have to, like, play in the game, each game. Like, in the, hmm. like you don't have to be in the simulation. Like, they're just taking your likeness. Like, you don't have to do anything. He doesn't That's fair. Do, they don't have to do the dodge. Like, they're literally, he's literally just, like, not opting there, not to, like, have his likeness in the game. He doesn't want to be distracted. I mean, yeah, I mean, don't play the game. Six hundred. He, he, he don't need the money. He's so a manning, right? Jesus. Yeah, yeah, he don't need. The, I was about to say you could get the six hundred, but I was like, he don't need the money. He, he's not. It's crazy. His that dad he's and his son. Uncle. Well, both of his uncles. Like, both his uncles. Yeah, his uncle, he's the yeah. son of like the, the one that didn't play in the league. I yeah. have a, I have an interesting question for you, and oh. perhaps you can shine some light on it for me. What's up? As you may have guessed, I'm not really a football player. What? Uh, well, I would have never know, guessed that. What I know. Mean? Shocking. Yeah, yeah, I thought I you know. at least had like a few years of college. Slot. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, I was thinking strong Nose tackle. tackle. Nose tackle. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, Harrison Smith. Kind Corner, of cornerback. That's uh, Wolf work if I ever saw But <laughs> growing up, I have always been uh, a bit of a collector, so I liked sports cards. Uh, is that something you were ever approached for? Is it something you get approached for? Is it something where you just kind of have to like know people like what what's that process look like i'm sure you have at least some sort of insight into it because i'm sure people around you had it going on you mean as far as like, like uh like get how do you how does a player end up with a trading card oh with okay yeah right. yeah, yeah so so oh. top tops is the main yeah, is one of the main ones the main one that's the biggest one's been around for a while so the way that works is that's usually served or saved for like skill positions, quarterbacks, yeah. and all those guys. I, like, I know there's not they, very many old linemen with trading nah, cards. Like, you know, Trent got one, and then Trent <laughs> Williams has one. Maybe Tyron uh, Smith has one. Guys like that, Zach Martin, like he probably has one. But it's normally when you're coming out, um, especially if you're like a first round, second round guy, usually a company, you approach your agent, or if your agent already has a relationship with that company. Um, so it's kind of like a package deal coming into it. Like I know some agents that are just, you know, partnered with Nike. You kind of automatically get a deal with Nike when you sign with them if you're going to cool. be a starter or whatnot. Um, some agents got different um, other things like card signers and stuff like that. So it just kind of depends on your status when you're coming out of college. Like anybody's going in the so first round. it's more round about your agent than your team? It's more, just, it's more so about and your, your position, marketability yeah. as gotcha. a player. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. more so basically what I'm trying to say. Um, so like, so like Caleb Williams, he's going to get one for sure coming out. Um, Jaden Daniels, guys like that. Probably Xavier Worthy now that he ran that 4-2, he's for sure going to get one. Yeah, Somebody's probably. Somebody's going to approach him about it, you know what I'm saying? So it's just all about your marketability and kind of just where they kind of can foresee you going um, as far as, you know, your future as a player on the outside of the game. 
Um, now, obviously, the more you do on the field, if you ball it on the field, it's going to come eventually. Yeah. So you know, that's just a part of it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how that goes. It's kind of just part of the game. Once you start it's balling, once you start balling out, it's just a part of it. Especially if you become a fa- one of the faces. Yeah. The that makes sense. Yeah. I love that shit. Like the Jay Jettas, Jamar Chases, and those guys. I don't know. I don't collect. I don't collect cards like that. You like yeah. that? You like that? Kind of I'm shit. Mostly yeah, that's a lot of people cards. that's into it, bro. Like <laughs> yeah. collecting memorabilia and stuff like that, and autograph stuff. It's, it's like heavy. whole store. Like those stores are crazy. Yeah, they have, like mm-hmm. the authentically signed. Yeah. They got the, the the receipt. What is it called? The bill of authenticity. The PSA yep. graded. Yep. Yeah. Like it's, we've had multiple real people tell, like confirm that this is a. Like, it gets Christ. real. How do I know that that's, that document's real? Like, who's that? Prove that. And like, what do I trust them? Yeah, it's real. It's a whole People process, bro. They make sure, like, is this mm-hmm. really it? So if it's got that little ticket, crazy. yeah. What a crazy world. You gotta love it. America, man. I think I have an idea. Uh oh. I want, would you like a dab? Are you open to having a dab? Because I then I think Quest has some rapid fire questions. He wants to shoot you. I do. So I Oof. think you should take the dab. Oof. And while that's just getting right into the, your cerebellum, <laughs> he'll start uh, asking you a few oh, things. We get, into, we get into the hot ones. Yeah, I'm going to uh, ask you a bunch of questions. Of and I just want you to answer with the first answer that comes to your head this could get dangerous it's not, bro, they're all, these are we'll softball you, questions we'll bro softball we'll questions yeah we're not we're not trying to get you in trouble uh, slow I'm, pitch i'm retired man i can't get in trouble that's yeah, true yeah. you have any active <laughs> brand deals outside of chesapeake then you're good hey you feel me mm. never know what you want so I got some voyager this was a baller jar yeah. um, do you have any even rosin you got you i'm out of the rosin i have the temple ball still oh this ain't and i'm not one hash I don't know what to tell you. you. I got Evermore Rosin. That smells pretty good. This is uh, Diesel Rosin. This is the Blue Cheese. This one. The Voyager. Yeah. Got it. Voyager Slaps. It smells like it. Mm-hmm. I say it smells super turpy, and I see why. 10%. Yeah, that makes sense. And that it's uh, a. I threw away the box. I think it's heavy terpenoline. 4% terpenoline, something like that. Well, that's not bad. Yeah, all right, let me look. That's pretty hefty. That's pretty hefty. This one, this is probably the most interesting concentrate I've had recently. It's uh, the Black Lime Reserve. Yeah. It's a 11%, but it's like, the top terps are like Osamine, Geraniol, Terpineol. Geraniol? Yeah, it's like super floral. Don't Whoa. Get, don't, get, don't, don't get offended, but I, I like to be kind. You, you open to a Trav's Dab side dab. You, 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 you say trans dab, side dab, size dab, yeah. You know he's known oh, for he dabbing. Oh, he's size right? dab. You know that's yeah, I know. I, I, know, I know. I know. I mean, it's fine. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm open to any challenge, want, competition. <laughs> you know, it's whatever. It's whatever. Don't hurt nobody. Okay. Man, if I fall over and break this mic, though. Or like you, you know, know what's funny? We built this table. It's pretty sturdy. How many athletes that smoke that I know that are also asthmatics? Like, it's so good. I'm I'm asthmatic. Asthmatic. I always like to ask. That's, right, really? that shit cracks me yeah. up. I was like, fuck, my brother had it, bro. I feel like I Michael, grew, I think Michael I grew out of it. Yeah, like, you don't I, need to inhale that shit no more, right? Yeah. That's crazy. If I ever smoke around my mom, she thinks I did. I say, this is the black line. <laughs> I smell that one. Which one's that? The black line. I didn't, you know, wasn't as impressed. It's like super floral. Mm. Looks it's like super applesauce. Herbaceous. Yeah. Yeah. It's technically a sugar. Mm. But it's like out of like a it's thick layer like, of sauce on top. It's just liquid mm. at that point. So I mainly, I'm mainly on the Roz. Yeah, I'm like, big on the Roz. It's hard to pass these baller jars. <laughs> I mean, so yeah. Eighth, eighth prices are just nice. You right. definitely get your bang for your buck out of those. All right, all right, I was thinking. I love oh, the with the lighter, though. Huh? No, no, no. I, uh, I was like, damn. No, his to- here. He was I was like, no, damn, he going hard don't as well. Don't embarrass me in front of our guest, <laughs> man. Just because my fun. clicker don't work on my thing no more. Can't have why we need you to click those links down below. <laughs> all right. <sighs> It's a, this will be a cold start, so it's not going to take very long. All right. All right. So I'll tell you when, then you just pick up and inhale. And on, only minutes. put your finger on tippy top of there. Well, no, not yet. Not yet. Right. I, was <laughs> I was like, oh, All right, you mean go now? Go ahead now. <laughs> and hit. Oh, no. Like, uh, let the top go. Yeah, just put the car pep on it. Uh, yeah, hold it. Ooh. Hold it without <laughs> covering the hole. Oh. Yeah, spin that boy around. And I can uh, relight you, too. <laughs> Okay. <coughs> he's a warrior. As soon as you're ready to start He's a warrior. Talking, he's going in the ring, dude. Guy. Hold on. He's going to wait you one more. <laughs> you got to finish the dab. Okay. 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 Yeah, don't yeah, don't plug the hole. Keep your index finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you yeah. go. Okay. Now it's getting milky. Oh, oh, oh. oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing I hate. It always makes my eyes water. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm good. I ain't no bitch. <laughs> it's it's like 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 there's like, pain in those eyes. <laughs> it's not pain. That's just something my eyes do. What's up? You ready? Yeah, good. Nike or Under Armour? Nike. Blunts or joints? Joints. Coke or Pepsi? <laughs> Pepsi. Taco or burgers? Burgers. Favorite song to smoke to? Mm, Wiz Khalifa Nameless. Least favorite team you played for? <coughs> um, till I don't have one. Damn. Weed or dabs? Weed. Cake or ice cream? Cake. Pizza or wings? Wings. Blue Dream okay. or Sour Diesel? Blue Dream. Okay. Tupac or Biggie? Tupac. Indica or Sativa? Oh. Indica. Favorite music artist? Whew. All-time favorite NFL player? Ray Lewis. Least favorite Maryland brand? Grow us. Damn. That's tough. You, you passed, mm. my friend. <laughs> he passed. <laughs> Let's go. You said Tupac. What did you say? Did. Cake as well? Yep. Hmm. I love pastries. Pastries are always my weakness when it comes to sweets. Damn. For sure. Like, give me some fucking yellow cake chocolate icing cupcakes. Cookies, I love chocolate that. Chip cookies. I love a classic yellow Sweet cake chocolate pie. icing. Oh, man. Damn. I take an ice cream cake. Do you have a favorite yeah. pastry? Sweet potato pie. Okay. That's a solid one. You, had a white, you ever had a white potato pie? Oh, what? A white potato pie? It's like a it's no. potato. Interesting. Like a mashed potato I, I pie? No, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's a shepherd's it's, pie. <laughs> it's That's odd because like it's from that area you're from. That's crazy. A white potato my, pie? Yeah, my people are from your area. Where? What part? Yeah, well, more so Northampton. But like, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. still the same. You're still all seven five. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. yeah. No, right. sweet potato. Because my, my grandma, my grandma and my uh my aunt sissy and um my aunt Flo and my aunt Joe all make fire and my aunt Val all make fire sweet potato pies. So like when they used to make them on Thanksgiving, I, I, since the first time I tried it, that's been my go to. Look that shit. I don't up. like coconut pie. Look that shit up. Yeah. Like, look it up. It's a Virginia thing. <coughs> white potato pie. Yeah, white potato pie. Holy shit. <laughs> it's sweet, bro. I'm telling you. It's, it's the only thing that I know down there is like dude. the is like I know the I've white sauce for like Mexican this. spots is um like popular down in our way. You can't find it anywhere else. But now this, this is like a part of episode where we just start talking about food and I'm super like an down. Old <laughs> black, like, <laughs> Virginian thing. That's like, crazy. Yeah, trust me. I'm gonna ask my bro. mom. She probably be like, "What? You ain't know? Like you? Yeah, she you gonna know about it, bro. She gonna know about it, bro. I'm telling you. Let me see. It wasn't in the rapid fire. Now I gotta know. What's up? You eat crabs. Maryland food crabs. Yeah, oh, fuck yeah I love crabs. Yeah, from Virginia, yeah. bro. Hey, yeah, hey, we have we have fucking fried crabs. There's some weirdos out there. No, Soft my, crabs. No. My mom, my mom's favorite thing that she used to love to eat when I was little was fried crabs. Huh. Fried whole crabs. That shit be so good, bro. Like fried in fucking beer batter. Mm-hmm. Oh my mm-hmm. god. Put some hot sauce on that shit. So fucking good, bro. You like like all seafood, all shellfish, all that. I stuff. like crabs, scallops. I do uh, oysters. Raw I do mussels. What scallops? No, no, the oysters. The oysters, both. I do them both. I, mean, I, yeah, I, I gave him both. the first time yeah. he uh, tried an oyster. I, gave him, I tried yeah. fried oysters the first time for the first time in New Orleans um, while I was oh, with ooh. I was with Arizona. Oh, an elite place to bro, try. that shit was so good, bro. Oh my god, that shit was so good, bro. That yeah. shit was so good. And I do so muscles. Best oysters I had was in a. Um out of a gas station. That's that, what? That sounds crazy. dangerous. That's you know, like, no, better oh, than New mine. Orleans. Okay. No, okay, in New Orleans, okay. you eat out of gas yeah, stations. Yeah, 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 you can. That's you can. where you go. In New Orleans, you eat out of gas stations. But one of the best, this is probably weird as fuck to say, but one of the, like, the best looking gas station bathrooms I've ever went in was in the middle of nowhere, Georgia. I was on the road with my little brother. One that's time. crazy. Like, bro, that's cool though. Like, that's, that shit was tight, bro. It's always walked, impressive though. Bro, <laughs> that means a lot about it. It looked cleaner than it looked cleaner than some hotels. I was like, this is crazy, bro. I actually would come in here like and purposely like drop a deuce in here. Just, <laughs> that's, just that's how clean drive it was. out my way, just go. Like, hey, bro, go out my way. Nice bathroom. Was, he can't he nice can't bathroom. expose it right you now. We what? can't have people blowing up the spot either. Not here first. Bring back bathroom attendants. I need the cologne selection. I need mints. I need paper towels being pulled for me, bro. Stop, bro. That's funny. <laughs> what's your uh, That's funny. what? All right. So last question. What's your go-to munchie? Like you know, you're like you're walking into Seven Eleven. Yeah, like you know, you're high as shit. Two in the morning. What are you grabbing? See, that's tough. Cause I'm trying to stick to my diet, man. So <laughs> right, right, right now, now. I'm on so the same right tip. now, um, <sighs> favorite munchie in Seven Eleven. It's gonna be a pastry. So I probably say the Chewy Chips Ahoy. Ooh. Either that or the Snickers um, ice cream. Okay. Oh. But if I'm on, if I'm on my healthy tip, they got this little, little like trail mix bag that's got like the little yogurt covered 
uh, raisins. Yeah. raisins in there. It's Those got like, like cashews and fucking gotcha. peanuts and stuff in there. It's all pretty good. I feel it's it. all pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I feel it. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, man. Vince, I appreciate yeah, you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate yeah. you guys. This has been a hell of a ride. I hope you didn't get too fucking high with us today. You nah. look like you handled it like an absolute <laughs> monster. Oh, yeah. We rolling, man. We doing this. But, and then, too, to touch on that point, uh, just to let y'all know, guys seem like y'all might be into the gaming tip. I know you said mm-hmm. you were. I'm putting together a, um, a cannabis gaming tournament this summer. Oh, word? In July. Yeah. So, you know, if y'all want to come yeah. through. And in there, yeah. we're in there. Yeah, yeah man. I stream on Twitch. What, oh, that's game, a bet. what games are we? What are we playing? Do we? Or is there we any details? You got any? It's gonna be Madden, Two K, Tekken, and Smash Bros. Ooh, I'm oh, there for shit, Smash Bros. Smash. Smash. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I won't win, but I'll play. Let me get in on this. It's Smash. for a cash prize too. Which Smash are we playing? Are we playing? Um, I assume the new one, Ultimate. The new one. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's cash prize. Listen, I'll bring the GameCube. Yeah, I'll yeah, bring yeah, the GameCube. We get my pro control out. Yeah, Y'all hear it here first, man. Get warm. We'll put links down the video description so you can. Go to his Instagram page. You can uh, also go to his place of business. Yes, mm-hmm. sir. Check him out. Chesapeake Apothecary. Both locations. Both links down below. Also, all the brands, Instagrams. Check them all out, man. Canna fam, this has been Trav's Dubs, Full Mount Morgan, Canna Quest, and Vince Painter. Get to the joint. We'll catch you in the next episode. Peace. Peace.